Star Fox is stuck in a time loop. For the past 25 years, Nintendo has made and remade the same basic Star Fox over and over again. With the occasional detour, like this one, and this one, and this one. But they always return to that same first story. Star Fox 64 was a great reimagining of the original game, but remakes account for half of the series now. And as time goes on, they're getting worse at capturing what makes Star Fox special in the first place. You'd think it would be easy, the game is right there. We have 25 years of better technology and better design to help. There's no reason it can't be topped. Star Fox 64 is a great game, but there's plenty of room to improve upon that formula. Whatever that hypothetical Super Star Fox game is, it's not Star Fox Zero. Now, I don't hate Star Fox Zero. I've earned every gold medal and I've done a number of runs in the arcade mode. I've enjoyed it, and it's probably as close as I'm going to get to the Star Fox 64 sequel that I want to see. But it's still very disappointing. The motion controls and dual screen gameplay are a big barrier to entry, and they hurt the game overall, but that's not the only issue. To me, Star Fox Zero is hamstrung by its structure and mission design. The hallmark of Star Fox 64 was its unusual branching path structure. It took an approach to alternate paths that very few games have tried. For most missions in Star Fox 64, there are hidden objectives that determine your next mission. Complete that objective and you will see mission accomplished at the end of the run and you will branch off to a more difficult path. For example, in the game's first mission in Corneria, you can save Falco and fly through these stone arches to unlock a unique section of the map hidden behind this waterfall. Beat the unique boss here and you'll play the next stage in Sector Y instead of Medio. Most of the game's stages have at least one secret objective, but some have more. In Sector X, if you take too long to defeat the boss, Slippy will crash into the planet Titania. Or beat the boss early enough and you'll head to Macbeth. Or find the extra secret path and get warped to Sector Z. Over in Sector Y, if you fail to take out at least 100 ships, you will go to Katina instead of Aquas. Even the final mission on Venom is divided into two very different stages, depending if you went to Bolsa or Area 6 beforehand. Some stages will even play out differently based on how you got there. Star Wolf will show up on Bolsa if you didn't take them out on Ficina. Temporary wingmates like Bill and Cat will help you out in later stages if you met with them earlier. All of these paths were a great reward for playing well and finding secrets. They aren't just spelled out for you. You have to piece together how to get to them through context clues or just by being thorough. Your reward is an entirely new chunk of the game that you've never seen before. Reaching Sector Z from Zonus is an actual challenge that the average player will likely fail their first time. So when you nail it and take out every searchlight, it's really satisfying. The branching structure makes each run feel different from the last and does so much for Star Fox 64's replayability. Over time, as new Star Fox games came and went, it's always bugged me that they never went further with that structure. Star Fox Adventures was a Zelda game. Star Fox Assault was a linear campaign. Star Fox Command on the DS sort of brought it back, but it was presented like a choose-your-own-adventure, and the strategy-based gameplay and its repetitive mission design undercut it. And Star Fox 64 3D was a one-to-one -one remake with no new single-player content. I think that a game with the structure and core gameplay of Star Fox 64, but with more elaborate scenarios and more complex and detailed branching paths, would be a no-brainer in a sequel. It was something I wanted to see in Star Fox Zero, and it kinda happened. But the structure of Star Fox Zero just isn't that good. There is an arcade mode with several alternate paths and stages, but it's half-baked. On your first run, you're mostly locked into one path. You start in Corneria, as you would in Star Fox 64. You then fight through the Armada in Sector Alpha, head for the Area 3 space colony, enter a warp gate that brings you to a stealth mission on Zonus. Side note, we're gonna talk about this warp gate later. 
which leads into the battle in Sector Beta where the only branching path on this first run comes into play. Depending on whether you were able to defeat Wolf in time, the game splits into either a single mission on Fortuna, or three missions on Titania, Sector Gamma, and Ficina. From the end of these branches, the game finishes with Sector Omega, a revisit to Corneria, and a final confrontation with Andros. There is no secret ending here. Once you finish your first playthrough, the game begins to open up. Portals start appearing and members of Star Wolf will show up in other stages. Your Arwing also gets to transform into a walker or hack computer terminals from the start, which you'll need for the alternate route on Corneria, which is a lot like the route in 64, except it sucks. On the new route, you open the gate, save this battleship over here, and then the stage ends suddenly. You enter a warp gate and get into a fight with a remix of the first boss. Finishing this mission lets you choose between two completely different paths than the original. An alternate version of Zone S where you use the R-Wing instead of the Gyro Wing, and an alternate version of the Area 3 Colony that plays as a traditional on Rails mission. This is the problem I have with how Star Fox Zero handles its pathways. With the sole exception of the Star Wolf battle in Sector Beta, triggering each branching path is as simple as just flying into a portal or locking onto a member of Star Wolf. There's a lot less that goes into choosing a path here than in Star Fox 64, and that really shouldn't be the case. Some missions have multiple ways of completing them, like taking out the first boss either from the outside with your R-Wing, or from the inside with your walker. You'd think that that would determine your path, but no. They both lead you to the same mission. You'll get a medal for taking the inside path, but that's it. Lots of these medals feel like replacements for what would have been the branching path requirements in Star Fox 64, but in Zero, they're reduced to glorified Xbox achievements. The worst example of this happens in the Area 3 Space Colony. After some fighting on the outside of the colony, this mission normally has you go into an underground section to get access to the Gyro Wing. You fly it and hack into a terminal on this tower to then open up another terminal on the back of this robot gorilla. You hack that terminal, and then you just... wait for the mission to end. The gorilla sometimes punches some stuff and it's over. Hooray. The mission ends with Fox going into the portal to Zonus with the Gyro Wing. In later playthroughs, the R-Wing can transform into the walker and hack terminals, so you can skip that underground section entirely. After you do that, you'd think you'd just head to the R-Wing version of Zonus, but no! Fox goes into the portal with the walker and comes out with the Gyro Wing, with only a medal as a reward for your curiosity. The attention to detail is missing. The game has a big gap between the quality of its main story missions and the missions found on alternate paths. The story missions mostly feel fleshed out and complete, the alternate paths are recycled content with minor tweaks. The alternate mission on Zonus is the same as the original, just with the R-Wing and without Cat. Area 3 turns into a wonky on-rail mission through the same city area, with a weird encounter with Andrew that doesn't really go anywhere. They even pluck out your wingmates from most of these alternate path missions. The in-game dialogue is generic, if it's even there at all. The alternate missions feel like they're missing pieces, which makes a run through them feel disjointed. The main missions are well produced. Then you start what feels like a placeholder mission. Good, placeholder, 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 good, good, placeholder but kinda good, good, placeholder, good, placeholder, bad but not placeholder, and you're done. These extra missions that are supposed to be a reward to players who are the most invested in the game feel rushed and empty and looking at the circumstances surrounding the game's development, it's easy to see why it feels so rushed. It was one of the last games pushed out for a Wii U desperate for new releases. Miyamoto had a vision where the game was a showpiece for the gamepad, but that control system never gelled together quite right. The storyline and setting was yet another retelling. It's not surprising that Zero feels like a shell of what could have been. Star Fox Zero might be known for its control scheme problems, but that's not its only major issue. 
Rather, it's the game's attempt to remake and recapture the magic of Star Fox 64 without staying true to what made it so special. It's an imitation. It's derivative to a fault, too simplified in its content, self-defeating in its replayability, and it loses its identity. It's neither an inspired remake or its own game outright. You can't call it bad, but it's one more in a long line of disappointments. Over time, the Star Fox releases are like papers in a copier, slowly fading away as we get further and further from the source. It's up to Nintendo to bring back the color.